a set of eight going the other way. Come here, jump, come on, here. Wait. One, that includes you, yeah? Right. And we don't do the whole thing again from this position. At the end of that, you have to guess what happens next. You jump. around the square. Oh, and you don't have to slide by, you just go all the way around the square and all the way back to the square. That's half the dance. The other half of the dance is the same thing. Ending up with the very first bit. There are no figures from this particular dance, but I'll come back to that problem in a moment. Right? <laughs> Have you got a clear idea what you're trying to do? Yes. Will you leap to the other position? Come on, leap to the other position. And let's practice that. Come on, D. Watch yourself.
tapping is done at double speed. <laughs> right. Once again, boy, it's one in that point. That's right. One in that point. And four in the middle.
stick them up. Arms are then straight on the stick up your lower arm, as it were, on the edge side. And the processional step is just this. No, no, one, two, one. Away from the music, which is uh, whichever ends the top. I don't know. We're going down sideways anyhow. Four bars sideways. You know how old woman tossed up or bumps the step and go. You side step, long side step, one man, long side step back with a jump. Right, but it's like that, that's what we like. Yep. <laughs> Until we all fall into the table.
save this lot what happens next, and you can ignore it, right? Okay? You'll never do the top dance again, but, but, now you don't all do it simultaneously like you did before. In one pair, one side hits first, and the other pair, the other side hits first. I told you you shouldn't get too carried away. And when you change patterns, you have to remember where you were. Come on, boy. 
forward and we do this side, sideways and back jump to start the dump. Points. It's pointed up to your right shoulder. That's right. right. 
Tips, bats for the bank. Then your neighbour, tips, bats. And there we have four hits with the tips, right? Partner, diagonal to the right, everybody. Your part, your neighbour, who's following you, your neighbour, neighbour, I'm your neighbour. Right? And then the person you meet.
Shrewd Hyde. Back and hay. Do you understand what I mean? No! Then when I get to the end, we start to speak, the choruses go on and on and on, then you faster. So you get three times three for practice and then much for three. Right?
Well, last night we were chatting, but we kept coming back to why people do it. You know, in other words, the personal experience of it. Um, we all understand why we do it. Well, no, we don't understand why we do it. We see a bunch going through today, killing us up, see the bit silly in a way. You know, but yes, great enthusiasm, that's why we do it. But what do we tell other people? How do you explain that to other people? What the with? Masochists. <laughs> that was the claim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't well, you know, some of your reasons for doing it have developed since you've started. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't explain why you do it. You've got to actually ask do them. It. Say, is there something what they like doing? Yeah. Yeah. Say, no, you explain why you like that. Let's face it, why do people like football? I don't think people are interested any to hear any long answers. No. Oh, I can. There's a great deal of satisfaction when you get a dog. I find the simplest explanation to say it's because we enjoy it. Yeah. 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 And That's about it as much as we want. Sometimes I think it's because it enjoys us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that enough though? I mean, do you, need to, do you need to go into, if you're talking to people who, you know, you want to get into it, do you need to actually analyse why you enjoy it? Surely you just, you know. On that level, if you just try to get people attracted, then you enjoy yeah, it. You're talking it's about fun. trying to attract yes. people in. No, no. That's you know very really what happens. They come up to you, the crowd comes up to you, or the reporter comes up to you, and they ask some standard questions because they know there's an answer to it, though they don't know what the answer is, or don't remember, or don't care. Like, um, what are you, your Morris dancers? How old is Morris dancing? You know, uh, surely women don't do it. You know. Unthinking sort of questions. Is the underlying tradition? Yeah. So it's not really what is the question; it's actually how important is the answer. Yeah. What should we be saying to people? Why have you got a black face? Okay. Has he? <laughs> I'm not conscious. That's a strange report. <laughs> well, I must admit, when somebody says a bit bored of Morris dance and say, "Why do they dress like that?" I have no answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's where they live. Okay. Well, not like all the other board well, boys. You can't, the answer, you can't say the rag costume is traditional, can you? Nope. Because they've only been doing it for 25 years. It was traditional. So they attempt. can't say they do. <coughs> I mean, people I do say, say that. Do do don't they? Mm -hmm. You usually find an answer along the lines of that, that place disguises you. And you see the way we dance, so therefore you can understand why we want to be disguised when we're doing it. Um, just, in case we, just in case we meet somebody we know. My standard comment is, we like to be able to come back to the pub tomorrow. Oh. But you won't ah. <laughs> My face is black and I didn't have time to wash it. Why just come up and mine? Yes, the treacle mine. If you're abroad, you can tell people that it comes from a coal mining area, which is easier to explain because I could work out the German for that when you're in the German <laughs> country than we come out with some extremely... Where's the, where's the coal mine of having those leaf Well, must, must there are coal mines. Oh, yes, there were, yes. The country's yeah, great yeah. reserve of coal are down under the chalk. There. It's just over 5,000 feet down under the actual basin. Eventually, you know, somebody will get rain to digging it up. That's why the Industrial Revolution started in Shropshire, in it's because, Ironbridge, in Ironbridge, because oh, the ironstone and the coal were oh, okay. yeah, no, easily accessible. The charcoal at that time? No. No, no. no that's why it moved to Ironbridge. Oh, the, 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 in the valley. And then Abraham Darby. The seven well, once once they cut all the trees down for charcoal making, Abraham Darby said, oh, well, he invented uh, making it from coke. Yeah, What's this stuff coming out the ground? <laughs> we'll discuss it outside the room later. Early on, was that because it's a black thing? Yes. It's also the same. The border Morris Rain, Brosley, and so on, you know, that part of the world, came out when they had bad winters. You know, and I can't imagine a coal miner has a bad winter. He's down a hole all the time. <laughs> Now, I understand in my part of the world where the mummers used to come out in bad winters because they often, the people who were doing it, worked in gravel pits and the like. And come Christmas, you know, the rouge were frozen at work. Well, they headed to Corrid, same thing. Well, yeah. Is that story about Chester Sharp's in Boxing Day, 1899? 
bottom tile are true. Well, the story's true, except you've got the wrong angle on it. Morris was discovered by... Mr. Sharp was sitting in his aunt's sitting room, and the Morris came up and discovered him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sharp, after several years' hesitation, then exploited the information eight years later. Uh, what saved the Morris had discovered Mr. Sharp? I mean, it all depends, you know, which point of view you have. As far as I can say, as a Morris dancer, you know, I'm on the side of the traditional. But then the sense is one of the great things that's changed in my lifetime, that um, a lot of the sides, but well, the tradition, you know, existed as working class people in the various places, you know, and I really had, when I started, very little to do with what I would call the university-inspired team, you know, Cambridge, Oxford, derivatives, and so on. Um, in fact, I just didn't really appreciate what they were and their existence, you know, they were just strangers as far as a, from a social point of view, uh, which is why I ended up being invited to dance with Abingdon, because uh, I discovered that, um, Jack Hyde knew my father, yeah. not Lord George, but <laughs> my father had worked at Press Steel at Oxford towards the end of the war with Jack and uh, oddly enough with um, the chap from Bampton. And I took my father up to see them all one day and they all looked at each other in a queer sort of way and said, don't I know you? Uh, they said, Oh, well, no, I, I, don't, I come from St. Hampton, said my dad, you know, I, I don't know anything about Abingdon and so on, you know, he said, but weren't you at Press Steel during the war? <laughs> so it all came out. But, well, I tend to feel, you know, I'm sort of one of the last of the generations which were much more conscious of roots in that sort of way because I was the first year of intake to grammar school under the 1944 Education Act. You know, um, and it was strange going to a grammar school where in fact I was in the only year that had pupils from the local estate. You know, um, it's a sort of the thing that one only appreciates as one gets older. Uh, there's actually a cast of course. One of the things that's changed is that there are now very many more people in what you would call professional classes. Oh, very much so, yes. <laughs> no, I'm convinced I was in the, you know, I'm in the first cohort of people who went through colleges and actually went into professions. And the vast flourishing of Morris, not in the 50s but in the 60s, was really when that had got into its swing. And we were having many, most people at university actually had that broader background. Um, and university sides in particular, but a lot of young sides started um, because they recognised their cultural background. And the Morris suited them more than it did the sort of middle class or academics before. Yeah. But you can't say that sort of thing, right? you can't say to a report, you know, Morris is a working class activity, that's an, almost a meaningless statement. You know, you can't define what it means. I know my attitude about it is as a core of social dancers over the years, I appreciated that there are people who had working class backgrounds who obviously were no longer work, working class economically, because their attitude to leisure was working class. So there's a vast difference between a working class people, um, sorry, white background, and middle class. The middle class are much more conscious of what they're going to get out of doing it, you know. They, their leisure activities have to be cultural, you know, and they're upwardly mobile and upward looking and so on and so on, you know. Whereas the working class tends to leisure is for fun, you know, it's relaxation, it's what you do to counteract so the other six days of the week, sort of thing. But it's no longer true. I mean, the world's no longer like that. But there is something. I mean, we were talking last night about different attitudes and different reasons why people danced to the tensions in teams sometimes because of that. I mean, one of the things that I, I think is interesting is where you get teams who are um, 
primarily working class in, in attitude, um, and you don't necessarily travel, and you don't necessarily get into, you know, going to Sidmouth or going to other festivals right. or going to, you know, it's something they do, and it's a club within no, their own area. Like oh yeah, I know, but that's a separate issue. But it's not a thing. Sure. The rest of them go to they'll come along, and they'll take part. But but there is a distinct. You know, there's well, a, there's a, this is what I do and this is my group of people, but I'm not actually interested in going out and necessarily getting involved. Mm. Yeah. Well, I was always, I was puzzled when I was, was having did the start with it because uh, there was clearly a common attitude with them with Bampton and Camden, and none of the, those three got on with Headington, really. Mm. I mean, they recognised Headington as good Morris, you know, and they liked it and so on, <coughs> but socially they didn't get on until one Mayor's Day when they were invited over. Um, they came over before they changed to kit, <coughs> you know, and they all turned up with a rather large, high-powered cars, and all their wives were wearing fur coats. And we suddenly realised, in fact, this lot had been to grammar school and were professionals, you know, bank managers, solicitor, and so on. You know, they had a different background. And the reason we didn't get on very well with them is that Abingdon, where they suffered the day, wanted to talk about the allotment. You know, and things like that, you know, and I was, they didn't have a common culture. It was interesting uh, talking to some of Britannia at Sidmouth mm. last year because they'd not come across anything like it. Had no idea that we'd all heard of them. I remember seeing Ancient at Dancing England years ago and having the same conversation there. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, most of the makeup were exactly the opposite. Yeah. The reaction that we get to because, yeah, they know people come and watch them once a year. Most of those guys have been dancing for two years. They know people come and watch them on East Monday. But most of those people are relatively local. They travel to the, the other end of the earth, just about. Um, yeah, it's a five, five six hour drive. And um, they're getting standing ovations. They're getting hundreds of people trying to go and listen to their talks and things like this. Well, by, they, they, they weren't sure about coming down at all. And, and they eventually agreed they'd come down for a long weekend. At least two of them wanted to stay for the next of the week, which is nice. Yeah. Could be corrupting, though. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting that some, a team that's that traditional can just have no idea of the wider folk world. Mm. Perhaps that's because the wider folk world isn't that traditional. That's right. It's not part of the community, though. Well, there's a problem that for quite a large number of years, the folk world hasn't actually had anything to do with the folk from which it all came from. Yeah. A, and in many ways, generally, the folk from which it came from is alienated from it. And things. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, though, because well, the, today's folk were more, more like interested in interesting country western line dancing, karaoke, or Spice Girls. Spice Girls. <laughs> One of the reasons why Morris, <coughs> Morris uh, Ring started was in fact to break this link with what was then the folk world, you know, to recognise that the Morris world was a bit different. You know? And I've certainly met Morris sides in my lifetime who really don't do folk dance as such, you know, don't understand the words and so on. You know, They do it because it's Morris, you know, not because they're folkies in any sort of way. It's interesting when I was in King John's, you know, a fairly typical ring team, I suppose, in many ways. One of the things that caused stress in the team, when I first joined, there was a, an amount of stress between people who were in Morris team, the, who did Morris dancing, and those who were more widely folky. Um, that dropped because the worst folkies, worst protagonists of the folky end of things, moved out of the team for various reasons and more people became more interested in the rest of it. But the biggest thing towards the end of the time I was there um, was the fact that some people in the team were interested in the Morris world, Morris dancing or whatever, as a, a, a wide thing. Quite a lot of the team wanted to be in King John's Morris Men. They didn't want, <laughs> that was it. They didn't want to know about anybody else. <coughs> they didn't see it. They would never have been Morris dance. They just wouldn't have understood it. 
around. But I've feigned over the years, you know, when, when I see a strange, well, something I haven't seen for a while, and I ask them about how other signs are in the area, and I get always surprised, I still do it when I don't ask, it's right, they have no idea. Yeah. The East Club is a club on its own right, it doesn't really know much about the others, not even sure if they're alive or not, sort of thing. So there isn't, um, in my part of the world, there's no sort of close social contact in the Morris world. Yes, we've got a fair amount. It's because we're all getting free access to tea now. Does that come from having common dancers? Yeah. It does to a certain extent. It's one of those silly things that when Trigley just started, <laughs> most of us have been in a joint team with either, and we wanted to go out on our weekly pub tours with other teams. So we built up a lot of contact early on with the other teams in the area, yeah. in their state. The other thing is that the other is really quite small and has one very large yeah. employer. And everybody knows somebody, you know, everybody either works for or knows somebody <coughs> very well who works for Westlands. And therefore there's this interaction with, oh yeah, I know so and so, his, his, his brother works in the, you know, radar yeah. shop or something. It, it's like that. Um, so it's a big village -y atmosphere in that sense. <coughs> so there's probably a lot more cross communication. Hmm. I'm certainly sort of thinking of quite a few more stunts I know because I know that I know the firm they actually work for, hmm. and therefore you run across them, you know, and talk to them, eight of kids as it were. That comes back to what you were saying earlier about outing key people in various places. You know, this person is really a Morris <laughs> Yeah. But but yeah, but the other part of that is in terms of you know that public image thing of, of the Morris is because a lot of teams are insular. They don't actually see themselves for the team on what they want out of their team, and so for them a perception of the wider image of what Morris dancing is and what it's about, they're just not interested. Right. In I mean, and and they're not actually interested in promoting their own image either. They're just like getting on and doing what they're doing. And one of the things that certainly certainly the Federation AGM and this part of the discussion that we had there about the public image of Morris, there was certainly a spectrum of views of people who were very much so, you know, you know, what their team did was up to them and they were, couldn't be bothered about anybody else. And other teams are actually really quite passionate about the whole view about, about the public image of the Morris. And it was certainly from that that we set up the um, public image workshop, um, which we had about two weeks ago, in which a couple of people here um, um, came to. We also had people there from the ring and from um, open lines. Mm. Um, basically, what we were looking at there was trying to identify what the issues were. You know, what what was the public perception of the Morris? Why it was that we were actually sort of, you know, sort of held up as the object of fun. <laughs> but the other side of it is actually looking at the things that we actually wanted to promote in about the Morris. Um, but part of it being about, you know, it is about the historical thing. It is something about civic pride. It's also about you know what we actually get out of it, and what he, what the audience themselves will get out of Morris dancing. The fact that people, when they see Morris, actually do stand around and watch because they are getting something out of it. Even, you know, even the fact that you're taking space out of their pub. Well, it is an uh, it is a very unusual activity because we think of all the other leisure activities there are, whether it's sporting or otherwise. Um, we're the only lot to do it in public, mm -hmm. you know, where an audience is part of the game. Yeah. Dave Dye from Seven Champs always says this, we're the only people who make other people watch our hobby. It's not true, because amateur, amateur dramatics people do. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, but the, other, the difference with amateur dramatics is that people, people know that they are going to see a play and they go, they pay money and they go yes. down. Whereas what happens is we, we turn up at the pub, we say, oh, you lot, watch us. Which is slightly different. We, we, we demand attention from people who may be there by accident. Yeah. 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 May not yeah. present our presence. <laughs> but nobody thinks it's odd that there's live music at a local pub and so on, which is a similar sort of thing in a way. You know, a group's turned up there with some sort of range for the landlord, but they don't ask the customers. <laughs> but often they're ignored. And if we're ignored, we get cross and feel we, you know, we failed, or the audience is uh, you know, not what it should be, or something. <laughs> yeah. Whereas well, you often see, particularly, particularly if, if music's been booked by the landlord of a pub, you know, they accept that they sit there as wallpaper. But if it's 
very good music, it does demand attention. Oh, yeah, it does. That's the difference, yeah. isn't it? So it's good Morris demands attention. Yeah. Good but Morris demands attention. Yes, but I suppose the difference is if we put on a different Morris, uh, we still feel people should watch us, or at least <laughs> at least feel that you know we all yeah. ask questions of somebody, whether it's the audience or ourselves, if, if they don't watch us. I don't think it's true that an audience can't tell the difference between good and bad Morris. Oh no. It depends on the audience. Oh, it depends on the audience and your definition of good and bad Morris. It, that begs the question that they ever see good Morris to actually be able to distinguish. <laughs> well, well, good good some parts of the world they only ever see Paul so Morris and that's it. Circle, really, my, my parents. That you want to watch is good I was going to say, yes. Yeah. My, my parents have been dragged no, by me to watch me. And so they've got a sort of an interest. My dad's. Sort of vaguely interested. I think he was 20 years younger than me and my dad. Be able to give. I might persuade him to start. Um, but they went. They were up on. No, I won't name. They were on holiday. I will not name the team involved. Um, and they were at a caravan park. And this team came to dance at caravan parks. Then you nice captive audience. Things like that. And my my dad's comment was, well, they weren't as good as, as quite a lot of the teams we've seen. You know, their dancing really wasn't very good, but we had a very entertaining, pleasant evening. Mm -hmm. So that team, despite the fact they're dancing, actually is a because I've seen them. But they were obviously doing something right, and if they were really awful, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't get to go to a caravan site twice. So they're obviously providing some sort of. Yeah. Most of the public's perception of Morris dancers, the people that dance music, are very fat and have beards. No offence to anybody. In this room. Don't but me. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's, that's what people think of Morris dancers. Um, especially with Denise Kent, there's a guy, um, I don't know what they know, Mark Lawson, who is the guy that everybody picks on whenever Morris is on television. Um, because he's the archetype. He's the archetype of Morris yeah. dancers. Even though he's a minority, actually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What attitude do you really want people to have towards the Morris? I mean, in many ways, the accolade of the Morris is the fact it is sort of making go wrong. I mean, we join the Queen, you know, and things, the royal family and people like that is something to take a dig at. Yeah. Well, we'd have fools as well, wouldn't we? But that's the English style of things, isn't it? Yeah. The more you love it, the more you pull its leg, as it were. I'm not sure it is just leg pulling, though. No. I think. Except that you sometimes get the impression that audiences want the kind of stereotype Morris. You know, you see audiences watching, you know, as you say, watching sides that possibly aren't that good, but they're providing something that um, in some way points to an idea of what Morris is. Heritage. Where, whereas heritage. whereas some sides that we might think were better mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm actually are more demanding on an audience and, and possibly require a bit of knowledge. Oh, an analogy being most folkies would say that June Table was much better than the spinners. Yeah, sure. Yes, precisely. The spinners are the ones who get the television yeah. but, but the other side of the coin there is the ownership that Morris dancers themselves have about Morris dancing. And there are people who are embarrassed to tell their friends that they're Morris dancers. I mean, how many of you, sort of, you know, how many of you where you work, you know, do they actually know that you're a Morris dancer? Oh, yes, they all do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do it. Maybe this was here, but I mean, there's a lot of teams, there are people we have not tell. There was one person, <coughs> Sue, wasn't very really happy, and I sent an email out around the whole company saying that we would both be a group. Oh, it's Christmas carols. We were having a Christmas carol session. And I said, the group that Sue Toyn and I belong to. And she wasn't particularly happy that I was reminding people that, we've, that she's part of his Morris dancing. In fact, there's a loopy, loopily high proportion of the company are Morris dancers or have been. And we can almost get a sign up. There's less than 250 of us. That's, that's a very high percentage compared to the general population. Um, it obviously doesn't do you too much harm. Well, some people are embarrassed about dancing at probably when they start. I mean, they come to the team and say, or oh, can we go out in the streets all dressed up and prance around? What's the big practice? We have one chap who used to arrive in a boiler suit over his kids because he wouldn't be seen walking down the road. It's the one point that I disagree with your 
talk at the work at the thing actually. There is one very good reason for being very uniform at the conference. The conference papers available six pounds tomorrow. <coughs> you said that. Yes, I know, but I still haven't sold it. I want one. I haven't seen it yet. Right, down the video, anyway, what I was trying to say was that Tony was saying that uniformity, or at least the sort of uniformity that spends an hour and a half arguing about whether you have round coloured or pointy coloured shirts, is not necessarily a good thing. One good thing about uniformity is that it gives something for people to hide behind. It's not really me, it's a Morris dancer. And I look exactly the same as all these other Morris dancers. And a lot of people find that very, very comforting. I mean, I'm not one of them. That's why I used to be the fool. That's why I do the announcing. But a lot of people find that necessary in order to be able to dance out. It's also easy to hide in large numbers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because, I mean, I've been associated with Morris teams of various sizes for a very long time, but the scariest thing I ever do, did was a solo jig tour of uh, Oxford Street in London. <laughs> <laughs> that was very great. Maskist. <laughs> how frightening it was going to be until we started. <laughs> and what reaction did it have? What? Very positive. Oh, good. Yeah. It wasn't so bad. No. <laughs> so but Jenny said something important, which was that what the audience expects and what it sees, whether you're trying to give it or not, unless you actually stop them, is heritage. And nowadays, heritage I think is a dirty word. Yeah. You know, there is a heritage industry, and it's about mm. falsifying the past. And it's about, you know, lives of the forest. It's a place where you're right. We're there at the forefront, aren't we? Well, yes, but <laughs> maybe we ought to be honest, you know, and say that we're falsifying people's image, or, or you know, that it, that it's not that the view of the past which people have come to the Morris with is a, is a fake one, and we know it, and we might sometimes go along with it, with their, their fake version of it. Um, but I, it's... The, you the thing to, that worries me is you put, you, it puts you in a pigeonhole. You always have to distinguish between the past and history. I mean, history are facts. Yeah. Right? Past is your image of the, of the yeah. past, as it were, you know. And everybody works on their image. You know, in other words, you run your life on the basis, you know, how you imagine the past was and the present and so on. You know. um, and that's the way things are. It only goes wrong is when, in fact, your image of the past is so at a step of history, it begins to make the wrong decision. And that's why I felt um, that some of the remarks about pagan origins or women doing the Morris and so on, um, it was offensive because, in fact, it actually wasn't true to the actual history that we know. What the history really is, quite honestly, make, to me, is terribly interesting, but irrelevant. Mm. You know, the Morris, to me, is about performance. You know, it's about the things we've done today, and the ideas you take away, and whatever you do with your club, and whether that's improved your dancing or made you give up. <laughs> you know, whatever you get out of it, you know, it's, it's happened today. Because the Morris, being an ephemeral art, you know, only exists when it's done. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, at the moment, there is no Morris, right? because nobody's doing it at this particular moment in time. You know? There'll be some Morris tomorrow. You know? Yeah, there will be. But there is no Morris in this country at this time of night. You know, that's Probably an ale going on somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It might be in Where? Oh, <laughs> yes, there is. Yes, there is. There's probably some Morris still going <coughs> just outside Milton. Because Queen's Oak are having their ale. And they oh, won't yeah. <laughs> right. It's very rare then. Oh, no, 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 yeah, right. It's not even quite what it means. Yeah. Performing arts only exist when they're being performed. Right. So what we're about, in fact, is actual performance. Whether the next time we get up and do it, whether in fact you match the last time we did it, or were better or worse, or what. Interesting point. A lot of team sort of reinforcing that. A lot of teams, including a certain arrogant Northwest team, you won't mention by name. Um, <laughs> Slightly with age. Slightly with age. Any with age. Any with age. Actually, right. the problem that they were. He's on the video. Yeah, yeah, it's fairly yeah. obvious yeah. he's talking about. They were very good in 1979, for example. And sometimes they would forget that actually 
that isn't good enough. When they, you know, when they were all 30 and fit, they were good, but they still need to work at that. And saying, well, I belong to a good Morris team because when we were at Zippet or when we went to Letterkenny or whatever, we were brilliant, isn't enough. And I'm actually <coughs> see, I, mean, I don't know yeah. what the tech state there at the moment, but certainly the last year or so I was there, they were living on past memories and past glories. And they were pushing forward, remembering that the only, the only yeah. important performance is the next one. Yes, but if we're going to be like part of the heritage and not part of the entertainment industry, it doesn't this put a rather different complexion on things than if they're living on past memories and past glories, which is like most of our stately homes are in this country. Why can't we be the same? And not have to worry too much about it. Do we want to be part of the heritage industry? Shilling is a lot of money goes into the upkeep of those stately homes. They have to be kept the way they were. But there are other things. We've had this really. I mean, you know, what do we want to promote as part of the upkeep? Yeah, well, that's what I'm wondering, you see. I mean, it's the part of this friendship sort of scenario. Maybe we should promote it much more and forget about all this. If you were sincere about heritage, we wouldn't do the Cotswolds outside of, as it were, the area where it was done. <coughs> I'm not spending the rest of my life doing stage dances, I'm sorry. Not <laughs> well, no, because that's not how the heritage industry works. You I don't mean, live in the right this. bit of the West Country for that, anyhow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just over there. You're talking about sort of keeping up traditions in, 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 a, in, a, in a valid sort of way or, or a backward looking sort of way, but the heritage industry doesn't depend on the accurate local. Um, I mean, for goodness sake, you, you see all these um, genuine, genuine Scotch fudge sold that he throw and, and so on with, with, with tartan um, boxes. And, uh, uh, and I mean, you see, you see, you can buy postcards with beef eaters on anywhere in England. Because um, that's what you're you're right. I mean, That's heritage. That's not. That's bogus. I mean, the whole thing's bogus. But the curriculum for school teaches the history of England. It doesn't teach the history of Hampshire, sort of thing, you know. And the complaint, of course, is in Scotland and Wales that they don't really care about England and its history, except when they've been so appropriate. Well, I don't think I think you're possibly being slightly unfair on the heritage industry. Certainly, in the, <coughs> some, a lot of it, a lot of the museumy bits end of it, rather than the tacky tourist end of it, is trying very hard to show both sides. I'm thinking particularly of somewhere not very far from here. If you go to Avebury, if you go into the museum they have there, they've actually got something I don't think I've ever seen in a museum before. They've got a, we don't know what the past was like. There's this model of uh, one of the people of the right period who put the stones up. Except that, of course, they had no idea whether he was scratching a living from the ground and you know, hardly any spare uh, yeah. economic surplus, we, where we call it. So there's half of this statue, half of this dummy, is in sort of bare skins, you know, sort of undressed skins, and then sort of leather sandals, just a bit of cloth tied around with a couple of ropes. The other half is actually dressed rather, fi rather more finely as this Iron Age, splendid Iron Age chieftain with his jewellery and such like. But the display actually says both of these are perfectly arguable. And it's aimed not at sort of academics, it's aimed at general public and, and bright youngsters sort of. Thing. But, but I wouldn't call that heritage industry. I mean, I yeah, but it is. If you turn, it's got the brown signs, the tourist signs, and all the, all the rest of the, the gamut of it. But there's a respectable end of it, and there's a tacky end. But I, I don't actually want to be part of the respectable end either, particularly. Um, no. no. There, there's a... Um, Peterborough has a, a twin town in France, Bourges, and the, the team there um, is very well respected. Um, not for very, they are you know, high up in, in traditional French dancing. Um, in fact, when they came to Peterborough about 14 years ago, I had a phone call from uh, Leal Bella who wanted to come and listen to them because their music was so good. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, you know, they are, they're a nice group of people, they're really into what they do, but I don't want to be doing it. They only ever dance on, on you know, formal occasions. They've got um, historically accurate um, costumes. If they're not 150 years old, then they're models of something 150 years mm -hmm. old. I'm not interested museum at all. Well, in, it's, yeah. It, yeah. I'm not interested in being the best sort of museum. Equally, mm -hmm. you know, just, just as much as I'm not interested in being in some tacky. We, um, we had a um, last time we were in France with Abram. There was a, a 
point that came up, which one of the guys who was sort of much more into sort of thing than most of us are, had pointed out. Apparently the French distinguish between traditionnel and folklorique. Mm. And Abram were rather pleased, or some of Abram were rather pleased that some people had decided we were probably traditionnel. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact we all wore the same costume, which, which is a pretty good sign of folklorique, but then maybe that's the way the English do it, that sort of thing. And I think what you're trying, what the group you're describing would be definitely folklorique. Yeah. They are They're part of high group. culture. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not it isn't something that's really happening by real people. I think most yeah. of us would actually like to think we were reasonably real. I mean, one of the things that I want to do as a dancer, as a performer, um, is is to change people's views, is to make people, you know, come into a pub with one view and go out with another view. I don't want to confirm, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come forward, looking, to, to, looking forward to seeing us. No, no, no. But I mean, he, that, that interaction, um, you know, Roy talked about performance, he talked about art, and both of those things should aim to disturb people, disturb people's complacency. And I, I think one of my problems with the heritage industry bit, even the best of it, is that all it does is confirm people's That's what you views. expect, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Whereas the, the interaction is what I think the, the, the Morris Live. can achieve. Yeah. It doesn't usually, but it can do. It can do. It's nice when it can. <laughs> And that, that's the problem with people putting us into, you know, coming and, and saying, oh yes, you know, that's Merry England, that's, oh, it's the Morris dancers. Hello. And they don't actually look and they don't. I had a dear lady, we were dancing at Woburn, and this dear old lady came up to me and said, oh my dear, you're a little piece of old England. <laughs> 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 and I said, well, a lot of us were zealous, we were. <laughs> Was it? The intensity of it, so passionate that I would love a piece of court But isn't what, what we're about much more to do with our own club and our own Morris world? You know, like, like um, the fact that we go along, we have this group, we dance together, we go as a group to other places uh, in which we mainly stay together and dance together. We particularly like going and dancing with other Morris teams that we don't have this problem of, you know, an unappreciative or, <laughs> you know, it, isn't, isn't that what we're about? Because I think to a lot of people I know it is, and because the teams are different, it's very important that somebody gets into the right team. I mean, no, nobody yeah. actually settles very well in a team that they don't particularly get on with just because they might be good entertainers and they enjoy yeah, that's because out. we're clubs of peers. You know, and others, we're all people of a similar age, background, and interests, and so on. You know, um, I've, you know, I've talked about this before. You know, in other words, you get no training for this. It's actually a miracle you find people of similar background, of similar interest, and so on. And that's important. Now, there's no traditional analog of that, as far as I can see. In Keith Chandler's life, during the decline of the Coxal Morris, you know, they weren't clubs. They were families and friends. They get together to go out and have a one or two practices and go out and collect their money because they wanted it. And so on. Some of them did it because they loved it. But there was no club in the modern sense. Yeah, but that's just because the clubs have replaced the families that used to not move out from one village or one area. And yeah. Mar Mar families spread all over the place, you see. So there's no one to actually have a you know, ongoing community activity where one it's of, got yeah. the other people. I think Isn't one of the problems with that, that, that actually that encourages Morris to be very inward looking, and that actually confirms the view that the outside world has, you know, the, the, the stamp collector view, really, that it's another hobby, only we go and inflict it on people. Well, there's not, I mean, slight, slight aside to this, there is a historical precedent. Um, it's not as old as Cotswolds, but if you look at quite a few of the Northwest teams from the very end of the last century and the first few years of this century, they seem to be much more like our present clubs. And they do things like going off and dancing at fates and going away for the weekend and going on train trips and things like this. So it's not as if it's something we've completely invented, it's something we've rediscovered that, that, that was around. Well, before. there is a fundamental difference. The Cotswold Morris was tall and tensile and purposes dead over a hundred years ago. And the one or two places where it survived are 
remarkable because they're untypical. You know, yeah. a traditional Morris club is dead, mm. as it were. The ones that survive must be a bit odd. Yes. Well, that is the way look at it. In the Northwest, this was not so. In the same period, the Northwest, for example, was flourishing. Yeah. But it was different. It was more. Oh yes, yes. It was more club based. It was also. But more it's Edwardian in style around the George than Georgian, yes. I think. Yeah. <coughs> it's also more community, not community. It's more civic based. It got more um, <coughs> official recognition than certainly we do. I mean, the the Kenny, uh, yeah. what wonderful set of correspondence in, in the Horwich newspaper about the first time Horwich second time the Orange Team danced. And there are arguments with people writing to the newspaper saying they're doing it wrong. And that they shouldn't use slings, they should use sticks, because that's what proper that's what all the other Morris dancers have ever seen done. That's, the, that's what the proper Morris dancers are. Um, I mean I can't imagine any modern lo even a local newspaper getting involved in that sort of argument. But that's what was going on. So it, it was considered to be Part, more part of the community was than, a strong than we, ever, than we yeah. ever get. Well, a lot of that's to do with, with the change in the technology things, because in the, in the past, if you could only move from your community by walking, riding a horse, or relatively late, lately catching a train or, mm. or, or something, then you were going to stay more take, have, and have more of an interest once it went on, because mm. that was what was But there. that flourishing of the North West is after the trains. I mean, yeah. the, reason, yeah. the reason Horwich existed at all as anything other than a, a little tiny hamlet with the, that someone decided it was a good place for railway works. Right, so yes, but, but well, I mean, even with the Royal Trains, there was still um, a relative lack of movement because people were economically dependent on the work that was in the locality yeah. until, it, yeah. until it collapsed. Mm -hmm. until, until this until is Aubrey The Morris didn't make the world that you're talking about, it's the world that was then that made the Morris. Yes. And that's still true today. We are a minority activity. We're on a, a level with Jim Carner's judo, archery, and so on. You know, 10,000 people ish, about the same number as do Carnival Morris. In three counties. That's right, you know, in other words, we're a minority activity. And there's no way we change society. Society determines what we're like, really. But, but we can at least give to society a view about ourselves that we feel positive about and that we want to you know, make sure they, they hear it. And at the moment, people don't. I, th I, th I think that, that um, the, the past is a hook that drags people into Morris and brings people outside to look at it. Is it? For whatever reason, no, well, the, it, it, got, it got me into it, and, um, but, but, but what kept me in is actually not some right. late, late medicine past, but, it, but the cement of uh, occasions like this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the food and drink that we share, the sense of humour, things like that, and join this extraordinary community that's, that's throughout the country. Once you're in it, you suddenly just come. You, you, you know people all around the place. Yeah. You were watching today um, the Sidmouth video, right? All the sides dancing on the front. Now, the most public statement that the Morris side makes is how it dresses. Yeah, that's the image it's giving to people more than anything else about what they do. You know? And what do you see? Bobcats Women, long skirts, <laughs> yeah. aprons, bob caps, <laughs> men wearing breeches. <laughs> well, the last person I knew I wore breeches from work. He was my great grandfather. You know, um, the story about the Northwest, they went into breeches and clogs when in fact they stopped being ordinary wear. <laughs> Yeah, and people were expecting to see a clog side, sorry, northwest side, actually wearing clogs. They were playing on the antiquity of it. Yeah. yeah. Heritage. Yeah. So, you know, my thesis there is that in fact the typical Morris side is actually playing on this past image. Um, but, but why do we wear baldricks? I mean, even my lot, you know, um, or my lot so years, have all worn cross baldricks, you know, as a really a token towards the past. The other thing is it's a token to what people expect Morris dancers to be. It's, you know, if you walk into a, a pub and you've got Baldrick's and Bells on, someone says, oh, the Morris dance has yes. arrived. Yes. Yeah, what they say is jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> 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 I, I have a photograph of a Nigerian Morris team 
run by an Anglican uh, priest, you know, where the only thing they're wearing is a bull. <laughs> Did a solo jig, which was uh, nicknamed Justin Baldrick. He also had a pair of bell pads strategically placed, <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't on his legs. It's called a sporran. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that, that sounds actually more painful than not having them. <laughs> <strategically. laughs> yeah. um, so why do we do it? <coughs> yeah, the vast majority of the sides, you know, and I find it quite amusing. So we have these garland sides dancing on the front of Sydney, you know. Now there's a great pseudo tradition. Yeah. You're very hard pressed to find anywhere in the country where garland dancers were actually done. They were done elsewhere in the world, you know, few and far between. And so on. And yet we do it because what well, first of all it's pretty. The dance is actually quite interesting. Yeah. No? I was just thinking Baker probably wouldn't want to be described as pretty. <laughs> Well, they don't want to be thought of as pretty. Mm -hmm. you know, well, they I mean, there, there re really is no back, you know, it's all one of these things for the last 25 years. Exactly. Blame the Federation for as much as anything else. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right, <yes. laughs> Who was the last person to do a work of Garland's workshop for the Federation role? Good question, I have no idea. I have, perfect. But I, <coughs> yeah, you see, when the Federation was getting going, as it were, there was a conscious effort amongst the women to dance the dances that the men were not doing. That's the easiest way to avoid criticism at the start. Yeah. And therefore, they did Northwest Morris because there were no men's side doing it. You know, I was quite amused at the Birmingham conference, you know, to hear Schofield on about this, all this structure of the men's Northwest Morris. Without mention of the, the equally large number of women's sides who, far I know, all preceded them, and so on. I think there was but also anxiety to find something that there was historical precedent for women doing as well. Was there, was there, was there, yeah, but what well, I'm saying is, yeah, we started for right, century, right reason or wrong reason, it doesn't really matter. You know, but 20 odd years ago, you know, women's side, we taught Garland, we talked Northwest, we talked traditions like Wheatley and Ilmington that you know the men didn't do. We didn't put the other things on. First of all, it didn't upset anybody, you know, um, and when you're not very experienced, having somebody being critical is not very helpful. But also there was the hope that by actually opening up these things that nobody was doing, in fact we'd get growth in these other areas. And that's no doubt that's what's happened. The women's side have actually added a great deal to our repertoire and to our experience of the Morris. It's not the same, you know, but who wants women to do it just like the men? We just want our men doing it. It's you know, they were doing uh, like the men most of Well, no, no, nowadays that's a really it's a relevant point. The men's side or women's side or mixed side, they dance the way they want to dance and that's it. You know. Um, Sometimes I find on this side you have to stop and think, oh, they're women. You know, um, they're, to me, they're Morris dancers. Like the colour problem, you know, somebody points out to me that so and so's got coloured dancers, you think, have they? You know, and they're working really like that, that isn't it? I mean, one of the nicest things that anyone's ever said about Babylon was, where are the women? Because we're a mixed team. And there are one or two people in the area who go, that's quite oh. right. But the fact that, sort of, Two of our friends who know nobody, know everybody in the team, walked up, watched us from some distance away, and their first thought was, "Well, where are the women?" Oh. Was was really nice. Well, I must say though, sure. those um, border star clubs that coloured their faces mm. and so on, um, that removes all hint of sex as far as I'm concerned. They're all they're just all dancers, in the same way as you know the bass used to black up and be devils or Satan's and so on, you know, it's all, it, it removed the personality element from it. I would have rather they'd said, where, where were the men? Yes. Well, yes, but I mean, the fact that, that, that it was, the beards, were the beards were, yes, the beards, were, but the fact that it, with these, they you knew tell, these two yeah, people, yeah. they couldn't tell. Well, as far as I know, there's only been one men's side doing Carnival Morris. There was a team of dads who dressed up in short skirts and so on and proceeded to uh, do a jokey carnival dance around the local entertainment spot. 
and so on. I tell you one, one reason why. That's because most men I know who are Morris dancers couldn't do animal rights. That's something you've never actually properly tried. I do have some carnival dancers. We do go on a bit. <laughs> Can I go back to your point about, um, you know, when lots of women started dancing, you say, looking, yeah. picking out traditions that they could do that wouldn't sort of encroach on, on the male repertoire, if you like. Do you think the explosion of women actually taking up Morris dancing was because they wanted to be entertainers? Because I don't think. I don't think so, no. no. The, the sort of key points in the history, of course, are that, are that you know, you're party to. But um, Tubby and I were paid by Bill Ratter to run the Serendipity series at Sidmouth one year. I can't even remember what year it was. But we were asked in this week to do um, percussion. You know, everybody come along, bring a tin can, bring two pebbles and things of that sort, you know. And we had a great time with one melody instrument and about a hundred people making banging noises. Mm -hmm. Another one was, it's come along and we'll give you some wallpaper and make yourself a mama's costume, you know, sort of thing. And two of them were so-called women's ritual dance. It was just a careful choice of words, you know. In fact, we taught nothing that was ritual. <laughs> or dark. <laughs> <laughs> and they were women. Right? But there were, there were some of the women who attended that group and said, you yeah, know, why aren't we dancing it in public? You know, and sides you know, like Whitethorn and so on, and it very soon after. You know, and I think once one side had started, there was no problem with other starting. And that's it. It's just that it was just accepted wisdom, you know, received wisdom that women didn't do public morals. But do you think that they just wanted to have a go at doing them, doing it, or do you think they actually wanted to be a, a performance team? Can I, can I suggest you're asking the wrong person? Our Roy is a man who had been dancing for 20 years by then. There are some women around here who were actually the people who made those decisions, for instance, you, yeah. Jenny, Sally, Well, I always wanted to dance, Morris, and having made that decision, I didn't see any point in doing it in a cupboard. <laughs> no. I mean, it, 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 it didn't occur to me that, that it was a performance thing and, and, and until I started doing it. I mean, I'd, and I'd seen it done, uh, you know, Fates and so on, and good old Kemp's men. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I thought, well, I'll never go at that one these days. And in fact, I chose my university. When I was looking at university prospectuses, I was looking for the ones that had Morris signs. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> and I was absolutely astonished to go to the Freshers' Fair, and they all said, no, we don't take girls. <laughs> I mean, it just hadn't occurred to me. Um, but it was only when, um, when they eventually got short of numbers. And, um, <laughs> Wasn't one of the reasons why there was a women's side at Bath was in fact the um, student side of it had to open everything to everybody. There was no way you could exclude women from the Morris. <coughs> yeah. That was true of the universities. True of the universities yeah. in general. I mean, certainly a, a lot of Morris owes its origin to South City, at least in the early days of the Federation. But my impression is in those early workshops in the early days, was the enormous enthusiasm everybody had. You know, they came along in large numbers, they were prepared to work very hard it, to grasping the dancers and listening to all one could say about performance, you know, and trying to learn what it all meant in their own terms. And it certainly took six or seven years before sides of any quality began to appear. Because you know, you've got to have a, gain a certain maturity. But any side finds that it's nothing to do with sex. Mm. Yes. Yeah. But, it, but is it? Um, I mean, for instance, I mean, I can remember the first time I saw a Morris team, which was in Reading, and they were this team was dancing up the white lines in the middle of the main road outside the heat well, or whatever. Nobody had taken any notice of them at all. I thought it was really wonderful. So when when I actually started dancing. It wasn't with a view to actually being an entertainer in the same way right. that, that mm -hmm. amateur theatre is out there to entertain, but just to actually do it and be that team dancing along the middle yeah. of the road with nobody watching. 
you know, which is a sort of fun thing to do. And I just think it's a different approach. And to me, that fits in more of the idea of doing something because it's traditional and people do it, um, which is more in line with a heritage idea than it is in line with a being an entertaining performer idea. I think, I mean, the, the, the point where I think we start to have an obligation is that we go and force ourselves on other people. And we don't force ourselves, well, do we? I mean, we do. We, do. we, we invade their it. space. Yeah. You go to people, you know, people go every night of the week or every Thursday night or whatever, they go to a particular pub and bloody hell, it's part. full of Morris dancers. Yes. Or because now, they get there first and the Morris dancers turn up. I mean, they're sitting there and you make parts. noise and, and you know, you in. play music in the pub <coughs> and you go and pester them for money. And I think yes, that we then puts the an obligation to money off people yes. for watching this. Exactly. Our that then puts an obligation on us. If if we were amateur dramatics, then people would only come if they were probably if they were you know, related well, to us. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, people would come voluntarily. We we're in a different position. We we don't we have involuntary audiences. Possibly not for very long sometimes, but um, and that I for me, that means that we then have an obligation to be entertainers. I mean, it, it's different. I, I, one of the, the interesting comments that's, that stuck with me was um, Fizz was talking to some bloke from a ring team once at a, some meal. And the ring bloke was talking about ales. And Fizz said, oh yes, you mean Morris Discos. <laughs> And I like that description. And actually, ales are ales are like you know stamp collectors um, meetings or whatever, aren't they? We do what what we want in decent privacy and you know from consenting adults and all of that. And that's fine. But the difference is that we then go and force ourselves on other people, and that's why for me we've got an, an, an obligation to think in terms of how we entertain. You've got the wrong worldview. As far as I'm concerned, that the worldview is what I can see. And it always puzzles me as, as I uh, go through life, people push pubs towards me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it all depends on how you, you know, relativity. I, I'm not convinced on what you say. We don't actually impose ourselves on people in that sort of way. But despite the fact that we don't have some pubs, pubs. We sometimes get enthusiastic receptions, we sometimes get neutral ones, we very rarely get anybody who's hostile. So I don't think I don't it's, it's, <laughs> I don't think it's, 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 it's um, a major problem of us imposing ourselves on people. I think by and large people are, are quite happy to have something a little bit out of the ordinary, even if it's not wildly spectacular, it's sort of mildly entertaining. I don't see the problem really. But, but you've just said mildly entertaining. Yeah. And if it doesn't focus on that, if we want to think about what is our purpose, you know, is that making it less mild? I, I've always found, well, not always, but when I was sitting, when I was a sort of early days of my Morris career, um, in some ways the mumming was much better from a performance point of view. Mm. Thinking back on it, one of the things is that you take, we used to take the mumming to pubs and spaces that we would never dream of taking the Morris dance to. Mm. So you're meeting different audiences. Now maybe it's just they're different, maybe they don't get that sort of thing as much. Um, the other thing might be that it's shorter and it plays on the humour, so it's easier to cope with. I mean, if, if you're really getting a totally naff reception from an audience, and hostility is actually better, particularly if you've got a sword yes. and shield, hostility <laughs> is a lot better than total indifference yes, it or is, yes. positive indifference when people you walk in and people go and carry on yeah. um, but you know if you're getting the indifferent reception my old team could rattle through the mummers play in about seven minutes mm. six or seven minutes and you could be out so maybe that that had something to do with it but we were going out to entertain yeah, it's Christmas it's easier to entertain people for Christmas we're funny it's easier to entertain well, we think we're funny well, it's easier to entertain yeah. people with funny and most Morris teams We've had a problem, our last year's squire never knew when to stop. Mm. I mean, well, we'll do nine dances at this pub. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> and these are Northwest dances, these are not nice short concert <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about buskers? Because I think 
because they, I mean, we, we have a lot in Leicester, and, and they're actually just starting to introduce a programme of auditioning them. They want to ask in the centre. They, they've got to be certified. <laughs> but, you know, they also force themselves on people, but people have the choice to walk past them. Buskers have a very good measure of how good they are. Yes. Mm. They get, if a busker gets yeah. lots of nice, shiny silk things in their yeah. bucket or whatever, they're, they're good. But so do we, because we get a good audience reaction if we're good, mm. we don't if we're bad. So you could say it's just no big deal. Buskers start. But buskers, buskers start from the perspe perspective that if they're going to succeed, then they have to entertain. I mean, that's my. That's my problem, that so many no, Morris teams are actually easy. aren't interested in entertaining the audience on anything other than the, the <coughs> narrow terms that they see themselves. I'm enjoying it, so all the people who are going to enjoy watching me aren't they? Or, not so much, I'm enjoying it, but I am keeping up this valuable ancient tradition. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's another, I mean, no, I don't care yes, yes, yeah. yes, it doesn't matter whether anybody's here to watch me, as long as the tradition is kept up. That well, you, you, said, I, you said last night, wasn't it? it was, um, there have been Morris dancers for thousands of years, therefore you must like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I must do it whether you like me or not. <laughs> I mean, the other thing. But I, I actually don't care so much just about general audience, whether it likes me or not. I mean, my parents don't particularly like Morris dancing. In fact, I would say they don't like it at all. Um, but I care if another Morris team, who I think is good, doesn't like it. I'd actually go the other way. I, for my team, I'm much more interested in what the audience, what an un-inexpert audience thinks than about what other teams think. Because oh, I'm, well, I'm see teams are different, you see, mm. like that. Mm. We actually don't really like dancing with audiences, apart from other Morris <laughs> No, I hate dancing for the Morris. I mean, maybe it's because we're crap, you know. But I think it's also... You've never seen anything before. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to impress them. Look, but, <laughs> but but there are in some ways that the simple things you do don't work in front of other Morris dancers. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, take falling or take a, a an animal that goes and you know, chases people. It's absolutely disastrous for an animal to go and chase an, an audience that's, that's with other Morris dancers. Absolute disaster. I don't know. Chase it back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but you know, I. I I mean, it's a very simple <laughs> piece of humour, but it works yeah. usually, but it only works if people um, are wise to it, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, a good example of that, actually, the team that Roy was talking about to us, one of our local teams, Nobs and Nobs, is a stave dance team. Now, when they're at their best, if you see them on their own, they're lovely. Because, I mean, yes, it's heritage, because they, 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 sort of, they, well, they wear smocks and they carry these friendly society stays. And it is like a little bit of living history type yeah. thing. But if you're outside a pub in a little pretty village in Dorset and the sun is shining and you've just had a nice bite of palmas or something, this is sort of very much very pleasant thing to be involved in. If you put knobs and knockers on a Morris tour with other Morris teams, they just get completely overshadowed mm -hmm. yeah. because it's such a quiet, gentle little thing they're doing most of the time. And when they try to be bigger and brasher, it doesn't work. Mm, it's no. not what they're about. But at a, at a village pub, you know, the audience comes out, is it where the audience melts into the team? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they all absorb all part of the function, yeah. Can, can I move the conversation on to, to two things? The, the second, no, not at once, no. The second is this weekend in the future, but the first is, is to to follow on from what we've been talking about. Um, I mean, last year at Sidmouth, I led this discussion on the public image of the Morris. And sort of Janet got interested and the Federation got interested and, you know, that's, that's taking off. Is there anything Sidmouth can do this year? Is there anything Sidmouth should do? I mean, we get, as you know, the, the two occasions, it seems to me, where we get a widespread of, well, the two occasions I go to, anyway, of dancers is, is this and Sidmouth. Um, what can we do at Sidmouth? Is there something we should be doing? I think one comment about the spread of people, because um, I suspect that most of the people here belong to teams in the Federation or Open Morris, and not many in Norris Ring. Mm. And obviously there are a lot of... And that's also true at Sidmouth. 
uh, yeah, and a lot of the Morris that is seen by the world at large it's and is ring. anticipated mm -hmm. by the world at large is um, many straw hats, lots of flowers, and many riches. You, you, you only ever get anybody to address a problem that they perceive as a problem themselves. And I think right. that, you know, it must be true that the majority of the modern world does not see public image as a problem. Well, certainly the Sidmouth. I mean, over the years I've been going, the Morris has taken more and more of a vaccine. Now, back about 1970, the busking, which was all over the town, was a very important part of the visibility of the festival. But, you know, there are many more sites and we've been spread out. In fact, uh, getting people to focus on the Morris Day in town, in fact, is not in the interest of the festival itself. There is, there, yeah. is, there are other problems as well. I mean, the festival has been trying. Um, Jed and I probably have a slightly different view of the festival just than anyone else. The procession is very odd things. Um, but the, the festival has been trying to encourage more of a feeling of there is a festival going on in the town. It's not just that the Morris has been less important to the festival, the festival has become less important to the Morris. Um, there are fewer, it's the reason why you can now get a free or cheap ticket or something to go and busk at Sidmouth is because people weren't doing it for nothing anymore, and they used to. Um, that is something that's changed. I don't think it's entirely, it's certainly not deliberate on the festival's part, point of view. It must have something to do with the way the festival has changed. Yeah. It also must have something to do with the way that we who go to the festival have changed. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to go to Sydney and spend my week dancing with Morris team. I do that 51 weeks of the year. It's my holiday. Uh, and I suspect that view is well, again, more common the, than it used in to be. In the 70s, the Morris sides would go out and busk around the neighbouring villages and towns. You know, we always go to, um, down as far as Exeter for one way, up to Seaton and so on. Um, and what's more, some of the foreign teams were put into a coach in the morning and sent out to busk around and so on. Because, of course, East, De East Devon Council sponsored us at one time. You know, uh, and they wanted it to be known around East Devon. Mm. So we went to Budley, Salterton, and Bicton, and places like that as well. Which kept people. And also, of course, the festival itself ran dances in all the eight, nine villages. Mm -hmm. I, remember I mean, Tabby and I were always calling somewhere like Newton Popperfoo yeah. or Ottery. So <coughs> uh, all that's been pulled in on the ground of expense, really, and the fact the support's not there. The days when you know you could get a lot of people from the festival rushing out to have a barn dance in the nearby village have gone. But too many events, not too many, but I mean the, the events, the good events are now in the town mm. and so on. So what should, is there anything that this year Sidmouth can do to address what Janet's group oh. wants to pursue? Shoot all the appellation about it. <laughs> what do you actually mean? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to sort out. Well, if, I, if I could just tell you what, what, what the Public Image Working Group were looking at recently. I mean, we were looking at two particular issues, one of which is public image and, and the media, and the public image and younger people. And those are the two things that we've worked on. Um, <coughs> certainly in terms of the issue regarding... <coughs> I mean, first of all, I think what we say, you know, we recognise that individual teams need, need to you know, make their own decisions about what they want to do about their own public image because, you know, it's to do with their standard of dance, it's all about the way they present themselves, it's how they want to make themselves known, it's how they accept people into their teams. And all that's very much on an individual team basis. And again, you know, it depends, like I said yesterday, you know, that sort of quadrant, you know, sort of, you know whether or not you're traditional, whether or not you're outrageous, whether or not you're Premier League, or whether or not you're five side. Again, you know, all that are influences on, on what you do and how you present yourself. But in terms of the issues about public imagery with the, with the media, we was, was trying to pick up on the whole issue about what, what is Norris dancing, how is it seen. Um, part of it is about you know, how it's actually seen on television, you know, in soaps. Some of it's about how it's actually seen in literature. You know, sort of, you know, how many short stories do you know with <coughs> Norris dancing? How many teenage magazines do you get where they have photo play which involve Norris dancers? <laughs> But it's all that sort of stuff which people could actually be taking more proactive stance mm. in terms of writing, producing, putting stuff out. 
which includes, you know, Morris dancing in this scenario, which is part of everyday living. It's also in terms of thinking, well, you know, what is the image that we do want to promote? Is it, you know, the fun, fitness, friendship, or is it the pagan fertility and masculinity arguments sort of stuff? You know, and what we were looking at was trying to put together some sort of uh, proposal uh, to take that forward. Um, one of the group is, is, is already as part of a, a course that she's on, um, is working with her tutor to put a proposal to Channel 4 to do a series of six programmes on, on Morris dancing and, and um, you know, its traditional nature, but the way it's, it's changing and evolving. Um, there's the, the uh, uh, video that's going to be made for schools, which some of you will know about, I think I mentioned it yesterday, that's, uh, that's going to be going ahead and will include one on Morris dancing. And that will be sort of filmed in July um, and be sort of uh, out networked um, in the spring of next year and will be done so every year for the next six years after that. So there are some things that's going on, but there's more that we can probably do about that. And some of that, again, is individual people taking on some sort of aim around that. The other side of it is in terms of public image regarding younger people and how we can promote that. And one of the very good things that we have at the moment is the Arts for Everybody lottery money, which I put something into the Federation newsletter, basically encouraging people to actually get the information about it. Because what it means is you can get up to £5,000 for funding to develop activities which involve younger people. And their definition of younger people is under 30. But, you know, it might then be opportunities. Definitely is. <laughs> But, you know, but there are opportunities there for, for individual teams on a local basis to either get together, <coughs> link up with your local sports centres, link up with schools to do something um, on related to, to younger people and involved in the Morris. The trouble is the, the caring sides who actually get involved in these things aren't our problem anyhow. <laughs> the, the problem sides are the ones who actually don't care about people mm. and aren't interested in these opportunities either. No, but the point is, if there are opportunities there, then people ought to be able to you know, be encouraged to take them up. Because the more people do take them up, the more the Morris becomes um, a popular thing within mainstream. Yeah. And, then, and have, have a more positive image, yeah. it, rather than the negative one that people care to put on it. Right, let's be slightly iconoclastic. Um, one of the nice things about being a Morris dancer is that it's different and slightly odd. Eccentric, is it? Eccentric, yes. Someone, someone, one, of my colleague, odd, one, of my, one of my colleagues at work says, of course, says, has said to me on a couple of occasions, of course, you've got a slight advantage when it comes to office politics, Steve, because you're an eccentric. <laughs> but I don't think I'm an eccentric. I just think I'm normal. Yes, I don't and know. everyone else is in the house. Because you move in restricted circles. You're normal in the circles we mix in. We are, we are yeah. not normal. <laughs> I'm conscious of moving the branches out of bed by now because got nothing to talk about. And that's got a bar that's still. By mixing other circles up with Morris dancing now, I wouldn't be, if I was in a different, you know, if I was with my bird watching friends, I'd still be up at this time of night. They're even more odd than we are. Some people know. No, there's more of them, so we can't be more odd now. Sorry. But, I mean, the point is you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, I'm eccentric, so nobody wants to come and do it with me because we're funny anyway. If we make it too mainstream, then you know, it won't be a reason for doing it. I mean, you know, but you can't, on the other hand, say, well... You didn't answer I mean, that. that, 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 that you didn't want it to be special. Well, I was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to sort of build up towards it in terms of what the public image group was doing and what we were trying, how we were trying to address it. I mean, well, would it be something things, but that it changed is, 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 is part, part of one aspect of what might be seen as adverse uh, mm. image. And... Perhaps it isn't, you know, the, the sort of thing, the sort of jokey thing that's sort of said about Morris. There was something in Red Dwarf the other week where, so, you know, there was some absolutely appalling thing. Oh, well, it's not as bad as Morris dancing kind of thing. And, and, it's, and it's almost affectionate. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and and it is safe. not a negative thing at all. Mm. But it's, and some of this even the costume of sort of thing that, that you were talking about at Sigma. Some of that is with real affection. But if we go to the well, young people thing, it, it's an immense barrier mm -hmm. with young well, people. Right, well, here's, here's an idea then. Sidmouth. Sidmouth Rugby Club makes quite a lot of money out of the festival they buy buying car park space. And rugby clubs normally have a fair number of young men who are reasonably fit, also like drinking, which is quite a useful thing. 
Um, what, like what, what, what could no no, no, no. Yes, well, what, they're not busy. what could be the chance <coughs> of inveigling um, well, some some things I'm not sure how, how but actually starting up at least for the festival a similar problem called Morris team who will perform in the town to show that the town wasn't just invaded by people from outside but that but look this is our own our own team here you know they're young they're fit they're healthy oh, we child. call that a well, then, well we have yes, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. That, that, that's one yeah. idea. Then the second one is slightly longer term, but as in next year, yeah. but, but it yeah. can be thought about. Is that 1899? One opportunity for an enormous piece of 1899. We're playing on the past again. <laughs> 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 1899. <laughs> right. Get it later in the day. Uh, 1999. Right. 19, <laughs> will be 100 years. Since 1899, Cecil Sharp was the Morris or whatever. Now, whatever the rights and wrongs of Cecil Sharp, I mean that event occurred, and it is an anniversary of some significant note in the Morris world. Can I mention? I think it's also the 60th anniversary of Mary Neal's death. Yeah, it could. Yeah, fine. Yeah. The great thing about Boxing Day 1999, it's a few days ahead of the millennium. Yeah. First. Millennium starts on two. The first oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there's a. I agree. I don't understand why she's not. There must be enough people around who could put together the scenario for a major channel, I mean, cha channel Four or BBC Two drama documentary. Really in the morning. <laughs> no, it's going to be best best summer day. That's the sort of thing that we need to try and promote to get people to be interested in. Yes. Picking yes. stuff up. But in the whole Mary Neal Cecil Sharp confrontation, it's exactly the same. Right. So come on then. You can have the contact between the traditional tele shows and the middle class. Sharp will make an ideal sort of things. Character now for a film biography. No, oh, yes, typically yeah. fictional, but he had a most interesting life and involvement on yeah, there. Um, we now have a more unsympathetic view of him, it's a more realistic view really of his life and so on, and I reckon it'd come over wonderfully. So we need a biographer who's <coughs> willing to put, you know, to look at it properly yeah, I mean, it. if you haven't got that. Historic, that's historic that's thing, that, you know, that they, huh? could be the, the, the conflict between what well, they want at the time, time. but also you could have the, a successor to yeah. of, you know, what about Morris today, the, uh, and show wonderful teams full of athleticism and originality Great. and spontaneity and piss heads or whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people so will sit up at this time of morning and discuss the final points of Morris where most of the world has gone. And it's trying to generate those sorts of ideas. It's partly what public image group, I just keep calling it public image group, but it's not a pig. It's 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 a pig. So, oh. so maybe that's one of the things that we could be doing at SIDMA. Yeah. You know, is, is actually sort of, we actually have a workshop where we actually sort of put together something. Yeah, yeah. Right, I think the story. pig should appear at SIDMA, definitely. <laughs> <laughs>
It doesn't come from the channel, it comes from the production. Yeah, I'm independent. So this kind of thing would be I'm ideal. ideal. I'll yeah, talk 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 I'll talk One of the things that's wrong with Sidmouth is that we, the Morris has been squeezed out, of, squeezed out of every arena that it used to have. There's no dancing spot which is dedicated to the Morris anymore. We're allowed in the arena area on particular parts of the day, the Market Square particular parts of the day, the Esplanade on particular parts of the day. But there's nowhere like we used to, like the Blackmore Gardens, where you could go any time of the day you like and the Morris could get on with it, or outside some of the pubs. Mm. You know, there really is no focal point for the Morris. And the Balfour Arms is too far out of town. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. I don't, I don't agree with you. I, it might well have been dispersed throughout the town, but I think there's probably there's the, more now more than there has been in the year. dancing oh, during the week yeah. than there ever was before. And I think they have a wide audience because there. they do get spots all around the town in the it's main show ground and they get on the arena. Putting the spots on the, the arena, that's on the cafe, cafe you know, what do we call it? Cafe 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 cafe. Cafe. That has certainly raised the but they get, they, you know, the teams are, are booked all over the place. Yeah. The proportion they have altered with the amount is still not. Mm. You see, I it's think different. the teams were I mean, never there, changed. particularly during mm. the week. Well, it's bound to change. The, the whole festival's changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was bound. And all, I mean, it it's like, it's like punch. It's it never as funny as it used to be. And I've read every... read the old issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but people have been complaining this about the punch since late Victorian yeah. times. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's the second year, it wasn't as funny as the first year. The same is true with Sidmouth, it's always different. You talk to people who went, like, Rowan from Horwich, who went to Sidmouth, uh, probably in the early 70s, and he'll reminisce for hours about things. And, but they just couldn't happen now, and they couldn't have happened in 1980. It's not just they, they yeah. couldn't happen in 1997. They couldn't have happened in 1980. Things are continually changing. There are good things and bad things about all those things. I mean, those of you who can remember what the sound was like on the arena stage before Mrs. Yeah. Casey Music took Sidmouth over, that's got to be an improvement. I mean, like, you can hear it. I mean, if you're listening to folk music, it's got to be an improvement. But the arena's have improved over the Commonwealth Gardens. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I, I think it's actually it got a very valid point, but, it, but not quite in the right angle. You see, I think as far as the performance teams go, there are actually a lot around, and they do get quite a good yeah. high profile and quite a, lot, a big varied profile. And I think they're very important to the festival, which is why the festival has worked actually quite hard in the last few years to upgrade them. And you could say that teams won't come anymore for nothing, but in the same way, you could also say the festival actually recognises how important they are and is willing to yeah, sure. give them something in return. I think what is happening though is the numbers going to the workshops are declining for Morris because all the Morris dancers, like you say, don't want to spend all week dancing at Morris at Sidmouth. They actually yeah. want to go and learn something else, like Except for or salsa or something else. Yeah. The rapper, well, that's right, because there's a lot of Cotswold dancers down there who yeah. haven't learned MAPA yet, and so that's the yeah. latest thing. And when, when they've done all the uh, Morris that's available, yeah. um, you know, do they need to go to workshops so much? And there isn't really a but market workshops for, are not public for beginners. Shop. Workshops only exist to attract Morris dance at the end of the festival. No, they do, they do actually get people yeah. who have never done Morris before. No. They, they actually, you know, they're there for people, and people who haven't Morris done much well. Morris before. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's going yeah. to be a very rare Border Morris workshop. You know, I'm now only a Border Morris dancer, as far as dancing is concerned. Yeah. It's going to be a very rare Border Morris workshop at Sydney that's actually going to attract me. Because most of the people who are actively Border Morris, I know what they do. I don't need to go to a workshop to find out. <coughs> so it's a sign of the lack of people coming in. Yeah. The fact that the workshops are getting less well attended, yet the performers are still on the yeah. up. But in terms of the public image, it's the public worth. performance mm. really serves with. The workshop, if anything, I mean, is only an attraction particular. Mm. Yeah, yeah, take, either take, because it's something yeah, odd, take, take. 
And we've worked through that scene of teaching people dances, as it were. And most of the people there don't want you to tell them how to organise themselves because the club's organised already. Yeah. And the squire and foreman do not welcome you telling them they do it wrong, basically. Yeah. I don't mean the dance, I just mean the club and yeah. so on. They don't need to. But that's what we perhaps ought to aim the workshops very much at the 18 year old, you know, or the 14 to 18 year old. Yeah. Something like that, which. What, do you we know, who are a new audience well, that won't have done all the... Do we do enough before? to get it, the organisations? I mean, do brainies and guides and skates actually have a Morris badge? They have a yeah, culture badge do. or something like that. Mm. I mean, and there, yeah. are, there are lots of brownies and guides uh, mm. who are actually involved. If you, you go know, to the Kids Morris at Sidmouth, there's a brownie pack. Yeah. Mm. And they're still coming. I presume they're not all the same girls. I presume they're every year. Every year for, for thousands of years. Yes, they're they're ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. And they're wonderful. Yes, Sorry? the Sidmouth for the kids worked very well. Yeah. I think one of the things that I've noticed in Sidmouth in the last... Well, I've been going since 1980. And when I first went, there were lots and lots of young people. Lots of people... Yes, I know I'm a youngster. Yeah. It's nice sometimes being a youngster. Um, Lots of people about my age or a little bit older, and we were all going to Morris workshops. And, we were just, and then I've noticed, towards the end of the 80s, that I seem to be on the trailing edge of a big age bulge, yeah. a big population bulge. So what's put the young people Possibly on. is, right, <laughs> possibly is. One of the things I have noticed in the last two or three years at Sigma, and part of it is the sort of roots music, part of it is things like Cajun and Appalachian, yeah. Part of it is the sort of new age hippie thing, festivals being back in fashion, mm -hmm. is that there are lots more young people. There are no people who are 30, very few people are 30. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot of 22 year olds around, 19 to 22 year olds around. Now, at the moment, they're interested in world music, Cajun, or whatever. When I was 20, I was interested in things like American Square Dance. I haven't discovered Morris dancing. You know, I was a Playford specialist. Gosh, that's a confession. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of this lot are I'm actually... I'm Steve, I'm a Playford specialist. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the thing is that there are people coming up now, and it's not just the hippies. Yeah, it's our kids. I mean, a, a lot of them, if you actually look round and ask the kids and their friends, hmm. are actually second-generation friends. But they're there. Oh, and yeah, they're, they're there, there in numbers. Yeah, they're there because they enjoyed it when they came when yeah. they were young. Yeah. But they are there, they're paying for themselves, or they're working for themselves. There is... But there, but there is hope. It's they not going to be We may have another problem, though, that the 40 year old Morris dancer, which we have to face up to, is going to be the norm. You know? We have no traditional authority for how they should behave and what they should do, and so on. We have a generation of people, the like of which have never been before. They have a freedom to do things, they have a fitness to do things, they have the money to be able to do things, and so on. You've got two and, and a half exactly. years to tell me how I have to behave when I'm 40. <laughs> you ask my son. <laughs> well, I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> okay, but is there, is there any way then of bridging that gap, that very successful um, draw to children doing stuff at Sidmouth through the teens, where there are uh, so many other. But part of it is about having role models. Yeah. And it's about using the young people that we have in yeah. Morris as being role models for other people. Mm. And again, one of the things that's in this. Federation News Centre is actually appealed to know where there are either children, the under 14s, dancing either as children teams or children and adult teams, and teams where there are a large bunch of younger people, so that we can start identifying those and then sort of using them in ways to promote the Morris as role models because people will see, you know, if you, if you have young people dancing Morris, then they'll be interested in that. I was struck by something talking to Martin earlier, I don't know if he's around. But he was saying you know, that his team had a very proactive go at, at, at sort of, you know, promoting their team and going places, and the only people who were coming in were the people exactly the same as themselves, yeah. which is not what they wanted, yeah. but that's what they were promoting. Yeah. One well, problem is that 14 to 18 year olds have education getting in the way. Yeah. But the point and is, there are some. There and are you some can't argue with it. We've yeah, got 12 year olds. Yeah. yeah, the 14 to 18 year olds, if you promote Morris to the Brownies, Brownies cannot be role models to 14 and 18 year olds. 14 year olds rather die than do the same things that they did in the Brownies. Well, exactly. And they'd also rather die than do the same hobby as their mum. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but they do have a oh, problem that. in time. Or even their dad. Yeah. So they have to give up because they've got GCSEs. Yeah. And, 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 that is, and you so can't say, they oh, no. join no. orchestras, you know, and get to do this and that. Yeah. And can, can I, we work on this, assumption, in fact, if you actually meet and have a go at Morris, somehow that makes you feel better towards it. And I think that's true. I think on the whole, there must be bad teachers of the Morris who put some kids off. But on the whole, I think it's the sort of activity that people, young people, actually enjoy being involved. They don't have to pick it up seriously. But they have to be convinced it's a reasonable activity for anybody to do of any age. Can, can I the problem with you old sides, particularly ones which are full of 40 year olds, is you've forgotten what it's like to be a youngster, a 20 year old coming into the Morris. And the average Morris club I've met, in fact, has no idea of, of providing for the young people what it was like when they were young and started. You know, it's so refreshing that every so often meet a side which is newly started with young people and say, that's what it was like when I started. Yes. Thank God there's somebody oh, still being behaving like you. In a way, that's the best bet, going for, you know, new side starting. You know, because if I was to be 20 year old, I wouldn't want to join. Yeah. That oh, that's right, yes. yes. And, and especially a group like ours. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're the group right. that really yeah. get on as a side now, and have a lot of fun. But that makes us quite a close set of That's people. Right. And, 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 and that in itself is, is a barrier to new people coming in. But shared history, in jokes, all that kind of thing is a real Every other activity has generation gaps. Yeah, you know, sure. Every other, particularly leisure activities, you know, you have your age peaks, as it were, and you know, the 40, 50, 60 year old. When this question came up about 40 year olds, I went talking to our local charity groups and had exactly the same problem as the Morris. They've got old and they don't know how to attract young people. What they don't seem to realise, in fact, there's no way an old organisation attracts young people other than dying out. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was sort of well, to someone you were saying earlier. Well, they have to do is set up a new charity organisation specifically for young people. Or we, something like we, that. we went yeah. to see Mick, Professor Mick Astor from the time team a couple weeks ago uh, to the lecture, and he was saying well, I think one of his ambitions, particularly with time team, that's one of the reasons why it's got Tony Robinson at the front, and why Tony Robinson is the president of the was youth wing of the young archaeologist or something, is that what they're saying is that. They don't want. They don't necessarily want everyone in the world to become an archaeologist, but they want everyone to have been infused by archaeology when they were little, so that when they get to being older, they will be sympathetic. Which is well, like what you were it saying. It works yesterday. because yeah. television yeah. archaeology programs are watched by lots of people. Yes, and they they hit three million now for yeah. Time Team. They were really pleased with the numbers they get. They got onto the Radio Times list, the top ten programmes on Channel 4. Um, but one of the things that Mick Aston actually said was, I'm aiming to skip an entire generation. He said, basically, you know, he's writing off everyone who's over, <laughs> over about eight. <laughs> well, no, we're all right, because we're, we're already supporting him. But basically, he's, he's sort of saying, anyone, he can't convert 20 year olds. But he, he said, I'm with the Jesuits on this. If I get them before they're seven, I've got them for life. But that's almost, so I'm saying, let's draw a line and, and say sides which got a reasonable number of 40 year old plus are veteran sides. Yes. You know, we don't see them at the forefront of the Morris. We see them is it, where is the backstop. Well, we've got a couple of 11 year old kids from our side. Um, I think our view is that they're, they're inevitably going to go, but they've done that two or three years, and they've gone because they're, you know, it's peer pressure and all that kind of thing. But they'll be back. Mm -hmm. It might take 20 years. They know it's there to come back to if they want to. Jane, how long did it take you to get back into Morris Dancing after your first attempt? 17 years ago. 
things. You need to talk to my, get my wife to talk about children and Morris side because she's seen it in a way I never done because I was too involved with the actual Morris. You know, um, young younger kids and by that I mean 14 years or under, you know, actually get a, a poor deal out of the more adult sides. Yeah, they're some. They're like second-class citizens. Well, one of the nice things the boy, about treacle eater, and I'm not the only person. I mean, we've got one person who's sort of like a militant. This is that it doesn't have children all over the place. It is an adult organisation. Now, I think there is, there is actually a place for that. It's like one of the nice things about pubs is that most of the time they don't have children running around all over the place. And um, the best pubs, when they do have children in, it's still an adult place that has children in. I don't need to go to the T-shirt James wearing yesterday with the eel. You still got it on? No, I no, haven't. Um, uh, it's a pub called the Halfway House, and it was the camera pub of the year last year. And if you go there, yes, they do allow kids in that pub. They're very, very friendly towards kids, but it remains an adult organisation. And one of the nice things about Orange Nancy, at least in the clubs that I've been, been in, most of the clubs I've been, is it is an adult organisation. We don't mind having children, but basically they've got to behave like adults, which may be unfair, it may be discouraging them, no. but it's my hobby as well. I'm not doing this for any altruistic reason. But for most of civilization, that's the way people treated children anyhow. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's, it's a modern thing to actually see children as individuals who have their own so, needs and rights, yes. and therefore we are not geared up to cope with them. Mm. Mm. And we don't have to say that every single Morris team has to be dealing with, mm. with children. I mean, you know, Esperance, you know, we basically, when people have babies, they, they leave. <laughs> Unless they happen to be a musician, and then they stay. And cause problems. <laughs> because they have to bring their children with them. Can I... I, I sorry, I'm, I'm sort of trying to, trying to drive us a bit. I'm aware that lots of people are going to bed. And you have and another topic. Yes. Well, I have, and I, I do want to get on to it. Um, I mean, just, just to wrap up my contribution to what we've just been talking about, I think that, that Janet, at the very minimum, ought to, to talk to Sue and Sally and see whether it's possible to do a presentation of what the, the pig has been doing. You know, and maybe a, a brainstorm or something at Sidmouth, because I think that, that Sidmouth, I think the, the, that needs to be get going and, and ideas. But the other thing I wanted to talk about tonight before everybody goes to bed is what we do with Wantage in the future. Um, because, Roy, you, you don't want to do another one like this, do you? I, I, this is the last, the next to last workshop that I'm running is at Real League Characters for a weekend. I say next to last because I can't resist one in California in September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not for us, that's a something Yeah, okay. But, but, that's a claim, yeah. But, you know, the one day workshops I've been involved with either sides or the Federation this winter so far. Um, I found them very hard work. Mm. They've taken me two days to get over it. You know, that was I miss Monday two, at work. Takes me three, right? I got to tell people. I'm You know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they have come very, It's become very stressful to me. Um, and I've got to stage where I think I've actually got to struggle a bit more with my health um, to recover some fitness and so on. And quite honestly. Um, the sort of thing that I do best, the dance for the things and so on, there isn't the market for, and I don't really want to pursue that. I would like to pursue the sort of thing like my last workshop. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to ever do that one again on my own. I mean, <laughs> that was hard work. Oh, I talked all day, yeah. That was very good foundation or something rather, but next time it's got to be shared. You know, we have to build up on that as we build up the insights from people and the knowledge base. But part With of it is also to build up, you know, a range of people who are able to take on running those sorts of workshops for the future. Well, I, <laughs> one of the things I've defined is that the millennium task for the Federation, as it were, <laughs> is a, hey, to produce a curriculum. Yeah. I don't mean a textbook, you know. In other words, it's what are the topics and what sort of thing you've got to say about them that you want people to teach such that you can give the job to somebody who's qualified, is it we're in a particular area, and they will teach it in their particular way, but cover the points that you actually feel wanted. You know, need to cover. Because I'm tired of attending things where the wheel is continually reinvented by people. You know, they have nothing to start from, so they actually say the same basic things over again. And we've got to move along. Yeah. Well, 
just to point of information on that, Rian's not here, is she? I can't see her. Um, she is producing some, those of you who went to that workshop, she is producing some background material requests and feedback. And I've given her a list of all the topics on And she's probably, going through the videos, and she's got something that's beginning to come, come together. Um, if anyone else is interested in that and wasn't at the workshop, Tony, uh, if you told Rian about it, she might include, put you into, into, into the address list. Mm. So, what might, first of all, do we want another wantage? Yeah. Given what Roy said, that it won't be the same sort of wantage. You can't ask to offer you a wantage, you have to talk about what kind of format it will be. I mean, Okay, well, well, I'll make a suggestion a place to you for, something. for the last one we have here this century. Yes. <laughs> that we, this millennium, come on. The next, well, I know, you see, it's a question when you think the century ends. <laughs> I know when the yeah. century ends, but nobody agrees but with it. It's hard to agree with it. It's a period of 100 years. He's, the next, the next so one is the really last good. one before the Morris <laughs> revival is 100 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, we, we all agree on that. End of the first century. What I did suggest is that the, the next time was to re recognise that, in fact, the Morris has been around for 100 years of creativity. Uh, and rather than doing as I do, which is to uh, scrape the barrel, as it were, about things which were done a long time ago, you know, or revive it of what was done. And I was, it is a very backward looking historical, but that's a way of getting new ideas to people. You know, th these are old ideas which are novel to you. Mm. You know, um, I fulfill a task in doing that. But you know, in the last 50 years, 50 years is a long time, you know, yeah. many a science come up with its own tradition, its own interpretation. We've had some glorious sessions at Wantage trying things like Rankin and so on, you know, um, and I feel, feel that one of the things we could do next time round is they share a weekend, which after all is Friday, three sessions on Saturday, two on Sunday, that's six sessions, you know, we can actually pick six modern traditions, as it were, you know, and we can share that between, not necessarily six people, but three or four. You know, so you can say to somebody, would you like to come and teach your tradition? You know, not necessarily one that's well known, you know, but you know, something which the organisers feel is worth actually dabbling with, you know, and somebody can say, well, you've got yourself one session, you've got a three hour spot as it were, to introduce people in a meaningful way to what you do and why you do it that way and so on, so that people can pick up ideas from it or even adopt it. I mean, when I did um, the Juniper Hill, mm. right, you know, what did I find? The side at Norwich actually adopts it, you know, and when I went to see it, it was absolutely wonderful because they worked on it for a winter or two, you know, and they had it running smoothly, it was actually delightful. And you all know what the success of Dunn's Chew's been. You know, oh, it's dying now, but I mean, it really did a lot for people for a while. And it's, therefore, it's influenced the moral stuff for that. And finally, for the millennium, was to say, well, you know, let's have a bash at all of it. No, let's not instruct and things like this, but just come along and just dance away through the black book. Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing, you know. <laughs> There's a challenge. 300 dancers to do it a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> So what would you see, I mean you, you just put a, a suggestion, what would you see as your part in that, Roy? Oh, I can quite happy, you know, I'd be happy to share with somebody or other. Um, but, and, and yeah. teacher. I have, I have on my um, word processor a very large number of lectures I have given which are almost written up numbers of dance notations which are almost ready and things like this and I dearly want to get all that out of the way right and I think my contribution to the Morris now is to actually say uh, is the information dump you know what do I know about how do I feel about things as well not because of my views are perfect but they actually start people talking and thinking I want to get that out of the way you know um, I've enjoyed this weekend there's no data about it I mean there are they're always high points, they're low points, you know. Great wish for it is one of the lowest points we've ever reached. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to do it. You but we've all do done it. Oh, well, that's right. If we've done Bake Up, you're going to do Great Wish for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we 
so, all turn around and come to this and I've tried it. So, those who, you know, the, the stalwarts who are still here at one in the morning. Uh, not a representative sample. Not a representative sample at all. Yes, I mean, one of, of the is that it's to have a few. Yeah. Well, one of my problems this year is that the numbers have been down. I mean, not disastrously, you know, we'll break even, we might even make a very small profit on, on the weekend. Um, but, Drink some well, beer. Enough. Well, <laughs> enough, yeah. But I mean, <coughs> that gives us problems in two senses. One is that Blaine's Barn is, is a big capital cost, and if you spread it across too, many, uh, too few people, then it, it, it bumps the weekend up quite a lot. And the second is that to get... Um, exclusive use of this and not to be sent to bed at 11 at night and you know to be able to shift things in that room um, we need to make a reasonable claim that we're going to block book it mm. now it, there are 59 beds in this place so I booked 59 beds um, but at the point that I say to him well actually I've only got you know whatever it is I mean this time there are 46 bodies in total now that's just about all right we fall appreciably below that and I start to have problems I think I think one Speaking <coughs> as your your oppo, as you on this, there's two things about that. One is that maybe some of the publicity, maybe some of the things that we assume that people know what's going on. Mm. Yeah. That's probably true. Um, yeah. and it's yeah. Particularly for this one. Yeah, that's probably um, true. It's been a case of you know you all know what it's about. You've all been before. Come along again. Now actually, yeah. we've got quite a lot of newcomers here. Yes, this time we have lost. We must. We must. Then have, have lost people. Have lost people who've been. But there before. is a wantage club. Yeah, there is, yeah. and, and maybe there's. I, I said that. That's maybe yeah, in two and would look. But the other thing is, if we're changing the format, and this is not yeah. intended as any sort of slight against Roy at all, but if we're changing the format, it gives us a chance to say, well, yeah, yeah, maybe you've been to a wantage in the past, and you think you've got everything out of it. Well, we. Yeah, we're, we're trying to solve we also facilities. I yeah, think. that's what I mean. We 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 can. I mean, I don't think that the lack of numbers this time, if approached properly next time would be a problem. The other thing, of course, is you will have a bright new bushy, bright eyed, bushy tailed um, Morris Federation events office to work with because I'm standing down at the end of the year. How far have you? Uh, we've heard one or two people much right. mm -hmm. So maybe one thing is that, that certainly I'll try and get a draft of the invitation out early for comment mm -hmm. and, and we'll try and make I sure think, that yeah, the invitation we, is. is yeah. I think we actually have to sort of start again okay. and say I, that. You I, know, but oh, this, it's a but new, new, we're starting a new series like of wanted. Like to work on, you know. We yeah. know the I mean, right. all I need to decide this weekend is whether to leave deposits on the hostel yeah. and on Lane's yeah. Barn. Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, I mean, the other yeah. thing... You're not going to get a site no, are you? No. Well, yeah. no. Uh, another, but, but I mean, you know... Yeah, but we need to make it work. Though, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's no it's point in leaving the deposit, because so it's money wasted if we leave the deposit and we don't recruit. We need to say between us... I mean, I'm attracted to the idea of what Roy's suggesting yeah. because it means we have his input and, and so on, but we also start to spread it a bit yeah. and start to look at new things. One of the things that I that is probably also worth pointing out about this place in, in general is that this, this week, you know, Jay and I had a very busy, seems to be a very busy couple of months, particularly busy couple of months, and we also had one or two disappointments of Morris Federation Workshop or two that's fallen through. And one of the teams is having problems, and my work's going totally stupid, and James' work's going totally stupid. And I thought, I think, you know, one teacher, have I got the energy to get through another of those weekends? I hardly got through the door before I was feeling better. Mm. I said, you know, I've had some damn good times here. I'm, I'm going to I'm meet lots of people I like. I'm going to, have a, yeah. I'm going to enjoy myself this weekend. And um, it works a million miles away. Mm. The fact that the car may not make it back. Is, is doesn't even matter at the moment. It will matter. It's five it's five five it's five it's possibly. It's a, it will be a, it may be a problem at five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. But that's what RSC can't support. Mm. It's it's a good venue, a good setup, and a good arrangement. Mm. I mean, if as so I was saying earlier on, is it possible to arrange one of these weekends without? Any dancing at all. <laughs> we just come along, eat the food, food no, drink the food, and, it's not allowed, and, no, and do the talking. No, you got to be as well. No. 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 There is a need, there's a need for what I would call an advanced weekend, like we do, where in fact a lot of things are a challenge because of the rate of the ordinary. Mm. The handout didn't mention dancing. And I was astonished when I was told to bring six handkerchiefs. 
Okay, I mean, I, and, it, and it didn't mention the coconut heart. I didn't get it. Didn't that. Too. I didn't, I didn't know it. Didn't know it. I accept that. That is actually actually perfectly a very valid point. I mean, that, I, mean, I, I accept that. I'm happy at you, but I, I have been handed a shot. I've never saw you. Me. You're quite right. I mean, the handy has got two inward looking. That's right. Totally. I don't really need it. Everybody feels that, and it's not true at all. Right, I'm the second. I'm the alternative organiser of this, and I have no idea what's going on, Jenny. You're not alone. Yeah. Um, and I don't know more than when dinner. Just take the grass that everybody else has been not to do. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion then? Yeah. We have a little work in the room, so we'll just leave it just to you. I mean. Only, I just think you, you could do with some extra input, and we actually, a, a small group, actually organised yeah. this Look, event, and, and it can It's very simple, if we're going to have, out. let's say, four leaders, six sessions, you know, that sort of thing. First of all, you're going to, some of these people need persuading, uh, it's going to be expensive, anyhow. But also, like a normal workshop, you're going to end up with a paragraph or two about each session, who the people are, what they're going to do, and things of that sort. So it has to be organised. I mean, one to chapter now, and this is the last of the old series, and we've run on two more than I ever imagined we were going to do. Anyhow, you know, there's an in club because there's a style about what we've done, and so on. You know, we've got a collection of people coming along who don't worry too much about what they're going to do. It's just fun to have a go at doing it. You know, and the fact that things are challenging, in other words, they actually discover they're not as good as they think they are. You know, but we all knew that in the first place. <laughs> Can I ask one of the almost business question? What is the position of Open Morris now this week? Um, I don't know, is the short answer, <laughs> because when I originally involved, started, you know, was right. um, involved in the organisation, I was the bookings officer at Morris, and I haven't got any official position at all. In yeah, no, you, you, I mean, I, I always you are the send same the team as your successor now. Yeah. So I I send on, um, you know, accounts, and I send on. I mean, it's it's um, circulated through at Morris. I always send accounts through at Morris. How many people are here from at Morris? Not many. Few previous years, I think proportionally, it's been about equal. This year, um, I think. Apart from myself, Golden Star will probably be on the other. When you say a federation, you need to pay the size for size of your organisation. Well, that also is one reason why the numbers are down. Then. But I mean, one of the <laughs> one of the issues, of course, is money, because it is. Mm. It looks mm. like. I mean, I, I think I still think it's good value for money, but it looks like an expensive. Well, it is an expensive weekend if you compare it with you know your average sort of twenty quid for. Go and sleep yeah. by church hall and, and the rest of it. And that certainly was the reason why several couple of members of my team were interested in coming. Mm. Um, so not to because of the expense. Mm. Well, Although I was interested to hear that um, you know, some teams do actually subsidise their people for coming. Mm. I mean, I, I don't... Given the present <laughs> we pattern, that is, using Lane's Barn, using the, the you know, Dick Squires doing the food and so on, I. I don't think there's much you can do about that if you want to keep those things on. Um, can you get more people into that barn? You can. Right, it's squashed. Don't you you We've had a lot more in there. We have yeah. had more. Yeah. I mean, it's squashed. It's more this is, the youth hostel will take 59, and that's the capacity. We've never had 59. We've had about 55 in various stages in the past. We're 46 this year. Well, I think we ought to give it a go for the next one, see if we can actually promote it, keep it in the same conditions, but, you know, we use the, the somebody to uses the summer to talk to Open Morris to get a bit more even. I'll I'll talk to Yeah, I will. Would it help if I talk to Kelvin as well? Yeah, I'll talk to I mean Kelvin was actually very keen to come but you know has money problems and has family problems and so on anyway. Well, we had, season, we, yes. Remember when we started here we thought we wanted to actually a long way away mm. from East Anglia, you know, where, where a lot of the core signs yeah, right, are. Yeah. But it still turned out to be you know, it's such an excellent place, facilities, you know, worth the trouble. It's not perfect, no, but no, it's, as, I mean, one of the things, what, you know, a little bit of history goes, those one or two people maybe around who don't know, um, originally these workshops were organised alternately by Open Morris and Morris Federation. I'd been to one here when I became, uh, no, I was already a vets officer, but the next one had already been, 
organised, Tony was organising here. And I actually went up to him at the end of the weekend and said, there is no point in me trying to find anywhere else. I am not going to go to find anywhere better. Certainly not in the part of the country I was living in at the time. Um, okay, why don't you carry on organising them? Which is why he's been London, so it's all my fault. <laughs> I'm quite happy. I mean, it is so easy. I, I think Sue's idea of, of a committee is, is right. But I think that probably I'd suggest that I do the sort of domestic side of it because I know yeah, my way around that. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, easy. I, whereas perhaps it, you know the program side and the, the the advertisement, fine. Somebody else does. Great. No, I don't think yeah. anyone would be rushing to take the yeah. domestic side off. But the domestic side is easy. I've done it so many years. Yeah. It's Remind yeah. people though that in fact there were workshops weekends before. On Wantage. There were three. We had a three day, extra day one in Brighton, you know, where we shared only a bit of a youth hostel. You know, um, it was quite interesting, but not as successful as it could be. East Grinstead was fascinating because, in fact, we couldn't dance on Sunday morning because of the church services and so on. The problem with East Grinstead and the way in Norwich, there just wasn't enough space to dance. But also the problem there is they were educational establishments and therefore they got very expensive. I and mean, we may think this is expensive, but you start looking at that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. I, one of the yeah, but I, I mention this because in fact, yeah. all, before we got to Wantage, there were significant disadvantages mm -hmm. in the place we actually used. There, there were th in terms of costs, there were three major cost implications I can see of the next one. Two of them are the usual ones, which is the cost of Lane's Barn. Um, I was talking to um, Phil Head, the caretaker, who, who said he was going to have a chat and try and get us at least held on, on fee for next year. It's actually £50 more this year than it has been the previous year. I think it was about £80 more the previous year than it was. You know, it just goes up because the place is so much in demand. But he's, he says, oh, you've been coming for years. We're going to try and see if we can at least hold it. Um, the food is the, the second one. Um, we paid £10 the evening meal tonight and £4 for each of the lunches. Um, now, you know, I think that's not bad, but it, it's a substantial amount of the, yeah. of the money for the weekend. Yeah. The other thing about what Roy is proposing, um, which I think is an excellent idea, is, is that in, to an extent it will increase some of the costs, because there will be more people who, um, you know, you, you're not necessarily going to be charging or you're going to be giving expenses or whatever. So there will be some rise there, but I mean, that's probably comparatively small. Yeah, it depends on it depends on yeah, That's right. Yeah, I mean we can we can do something yes. like that. I mean the standard the standard arrangement for Morris Federation swaps, as opposed to sort of a whole day workshop, is that I, I very graciously don't charge them to come if they're teaching. Mm. A team who are providing teacher gets a free ticket. Yeah, but you see, not charging to come here means sixty quid. Sixty quid, not seven pound fifty. Oh, there is a local team that's actually organising this. Sorry, as it were. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, there are ways yeah, of looking at it. Could get around that, <coughs> yeah. one, one of the things I, I wonder whether, in fact, you need more than that, because one of the pleasures about this type of weekend is the rate at which you go through dance material. And, you know, the thought of coming and just, you know, doing four traditions or something, you know, yeah, it was well, four new ideas yeah. isn't actually yeah. enough. I mean, you actually whip through a tradition very quickly. But that's right, but that's part of the attraction of the weekend, mm, yeah. and I think we would want to try yeah. and without the data overload, process. it just wouldn't be the same, right? Without the fact that your brain oh, is full yes, by sorry, I do nine agree, thirty. Which is only why I suggest that what people teach is something which is totally unfamiliar. Right, but can I you'd have to look at that fairly carefully and so I think you'd be offering people a reduction. Yeah. Otherwise we're getting to do back to we start again. You know, yeah. Can yeah. can we Okay, to, to summarise then, what we're looking at is we will go ahead on 19, October 98, which yeah. will be due for the next one. October 98. And I'll, I'll look and find an appropriate date in the first half of October. Is it better to avoid half term? Yes. Right, so yes, first half of October, really and I'll book, I'll leave a deposit on the youth hostel and I'll put a deposit on Lane's Barn. And for the, from the point of view of ensuring it happens, that's all we need to do at this point. But, yeah. but there then needs to be... A, um, a, a you know a working party or whatever. We or seem a meeting. to be well thought of by the, both the barn and here. It's really nice that we. I feel we're now sort of part of the furniture around the place and people. Um, I don't know if you remember the the young Australian girl who used to work here under the previous 
um, Phil Head said to me today, oh no, Dick Squire said to me today, oh, um, you know, Karen sends her best wishes, wishes to be remembered to you, you know. I mean, all that sort of thing's nice, and the pub really, where we get the beer now, is all of that side's really nice. I, yeah. I like you know it's every 18 months. Well, yeah, but they it's accept that, and that's, that's yes, fine. It's quite a lot every 18 months, because yes, it doesn't have to be work for it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so I will I will book for early October, and we'll look and at then, then what we do. And then talk to a couple of people about yeah. that. So something will happen, and we'll start thinking about what happens. How are you going to identify your yeah. working group? Then the last out of the building. Well, I suggest that Roy, Roy is the focal point for a meeting, at least. You know, perhaps they'll have to Sidmouth or whatever, but uh, that Roy can be it. You won't be at Sidmouth, you won't have no. to Sidmouth. But you could even, you, you could, if you like, just think how, who you would like exactly. to do things. And actually write a programme and say to Tony, yeah. this is what I think would be a good idea to have. Get it organised. Yeah, that's fine. Quite My that. objection is that back, going back to 1975, or back, going back to Halsey Manor 64, yeah, every time I've run a weekend, I set it up and did what I wanted to do. You know, I have a, a long-term agenda of what I was going to get through and all these things, you know. Um, I'm beginning to feel I'm running out of material, <laughs> you know, after all these years. <laughs> And you've still probably got a better overview of other people. I mean, you talked about, you know, Raglan or Dunstew or whatever. Well, I mean, yeah. no matter what it is. But, I mean, you've probably got... I've got maturity on a number, number of invented traditions which no longer exist, as it were. But you might be able to think, oh, so-and-so is the person to identify, to ask to run a session there. And I think Sue's right. It might be better not to look at it at six sessions and three hours a slot. But, you know, an hour a slot almost. I mean, that might be too much, but it's... The technical yeah, concept yeah. is still a good question, boy. Yes. Well, you, you know very well, under, under my tuition, as it were, we get through all that's worth knowing about a tradition in an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. at that point, it's you beginning to be la labour a rather, you exactly. know. Exactly, I would want be, to do more. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, with anyone of this group pretty well, who are experienced, certainly anyone in this group who's, who's taught workshops as well, probably would agree that they could do the same. Mm. I mean, it's, if I do Litchfield, I always want about a day and a quarter, but that's to do every single dance and get quite a lot of style over. Yeah. If you want me to rattle through it, then yes, I probably could but, do it now. We're trying to give people these things a flavour of flavour yeah. and um, ideas. We're not trying to impose on a dancer or a club a way of doing something. But also, the, I mean, the, the session you did this afternoon on, on speeds and rhythms, I think there ought to be, you know, we're not just looking at, at doing a tradition, we're looking at those sorts of focuses as well, and yeah. we've had similar ones in the past. But you only have to do that once, as you were. Oh yeah, but, but there are different yeah. ones. Yeah. I mean, you did one last, last time on, was it choruses? I can't remember. Yeah, I've done one on, on you know, mechanics of movement. And that's right. Like that. yeah. all, all of that, I think, is, is useful. Well, there are lots of bits of stuff in the Cotswold curriculum stuff, mm. which might be you know bits to take out of to make yeah. one particular session. Yes, one of your fifty, one of your asides or some of your asides in the Cotswold curriculum you get an hour out of, no problem. Mm. Yeah. Some respect. Yeah. Well, I've, I've known in the past I've got been given engagements for workshops because people actually like the the asides, yeah. you know, the, the historical information, all the other you know, relations things. Can I, can I suggest that perhaps tomorrow... If we don't get other people in mm. to do it, where are we going to have people who actually provide this sort of service? Can I suggest tomorrow then that, that Roy, Sue, Steve and I fix a date to think about the next one? Is that, is that fair? Sue is a musician, Steve is at present the Federation um, events officer. Yeah, I'll, I'll... Is that fair? All right, we'll fix it out mm. tomorrow, but I'll, I will book the place. Right. Can I get to it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not another tradition. None of us can fight. Exactly, yes. What's one of those dormant weekends? Takes one to know one. That's all I can say at this point. What? What? And that was on video as well.
Dave Robinson's address, because I've got it here.